welcome back. This is part six of our online tutorial series. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be looking at designer's timeline view. So as I've previously said in the last tutorial, there are two different views that you can use to create lighting effects within designer. There is the scene view, which we've previously looked at, and then there's the timeline view, which we're gonna have a look at now. So just to start off with, we're gonna have a quick look around the timeline view itself. There are the different fixture groups up in the left-hand corner. There are our different pixel matrices, which are now available to us. And there is also another row for our scenes. At the top here, we can create new timelines, delete previous ones, or manage the properties within the timeline. Over to the right, we have some options for how the timeline behaves, namely holder end and loop. We can also place flags on timelines. Again, I'm gonna come onto all of this later. And then over to the right of that, we have the ability to zoom in, zoom out, view transitions, lock mouse edits, play, jump back, jump forwards, and stop the timeline. We also have output live, so we can preview what our lighting effects look like on our fixtures. And then over to the right-hand side, we have our effect library, and underneath that, we have the different parameters which we can edit within the effects. So you'll notice in the effect library at the top here, you have a filter icon. And this filter icon will allow you to toggle between the group and pixel matrix effects. And I should note, we need to remember the difference between the two different types of effects that appear within designer. Group effects will target fixtures by the order that the fixtures are placed within the group. And pixel matrix effects by and large will target fixtures by their position. Again, I'm gonna kind of go through those two different concepts in a little while. To start off with though, I'm just gonna start by placing some group effects onto a timeline just to give you an idea of how this works. So I'm just gonna start off, I'm gonna get a static color and I'm just gonna apply that to my stairs group. You'll notice immediately that underneath that now we have our different parameters which we can edit. So we have a start time, an end time, and a length. You can edit these and also just a quick note, you can use a bit of shorthand here. So if I want this to be four seconds, I can simply type in 4S and that is going to then give me a four second effect length. If I was to use 4M, that would be four minutes and 4H would be four hours. We also have a fade and release time and then we can give the fade a skew as well. Underneath that, we have a color wheel, just like we do in the scenes view. And again, you can switch that to a slider view. And alternatively, if you really want to, you can save your effect to a palette and you can use that to change the color of the effect as well. Okay, so once I've got my effect placed on my set of fixtures or my group, you may want to preview what that effect looks like. And we can do that in a number of different ways. One of the ways that you can do that is by using something called the simulate window. And this is often used in conjunction with the timeline window. So the simulate window appears down here. I should note, when you hover over it, you'll get this icon appear to the right. And this will allow you to pop the simulate out to a separate window. So if you're using a setup that has more than one monitor, you can have the simulate running in one window, and then you can have the timeline window running in another. I'm just gonna go ahead now, and I'm gonna go to the simulate window. It's very self-explanatory. You have your different timelines up in the right-hand corner and then some controls to play them. And you also can control the rate that they play back. So I'm just going to go ahead now and play that. And you'll notice that the timeline runs for four seconds and then it fades out. I should also note, whilst we're here, you can also use the output live feature to view your effects on your fixtures if you're connected to your system. Later on, you'll also notice this area will fill up with our triggers and you can also simulate some of those as well, but we'll come into triggers in a later tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the timeline view now and I just want to show you uh, one or two of the different ways that you can get timelines to behave. So timelines can be a max length of 24 hours, but most of the time you don't really need to create timelines that length. Instead, you can use one or two features within Designer to either get your effect to hold in its last position or to loop. And I'll give you a demonstration of what that exactly does right now. So I'm gonna apply another effect to my stairs. Again, I'm gonna quickly change the length of this to something like four seconds. But now I'm gonna show you what holder end does. So that's the icon, the arrow icon at the top here. I'm gonna click that. Go back to the simulate window. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm play that. The cyan effect will play for four seconds, then it will transition to red. And when it comes to the end of that, 
it's going to hold in its last position. It's going to hold indefinitely in that last look. There is another option that we can select, and this is called Loop. And this, of course, will get the effect, or the timeline rather, just to cycle around those two colors, or those two effects. So I just want to have a quick look at some of the different types of group effects that we've got now. The parameters for each effect are different, and I think it's really up to you to kind of go through the effects and have a play with them and get used to them. But I'm just going to show you some of the recurring features and parameters that may appear within different effect types. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly delete these, and then I'm going to bring in a gradient. So now, as well as having the start and end times, I also have the ability to adjust the different colors of my gradient. I'm going to put white in here just so that we can see what that looks like. And again, I'm going to go ahead and simulate that. You can see that that gradient has now appeared on the simulate window. I should note that again, the group effects within designer, they're always targeting the fixtures by the order that they appear within this group. So if your effect doesn't look quite right and it's giving you some unexpected behavior, I'll just go back and make sure that this ordering is definitely correct. Within group effects, we do have some effects that have movement as well, such as the wave effect. Again, we have some parameters down here which we can edit. We've got base color, a top color. And you can also select the base or top color to be transparent. And actually what we can do later on uh, is we can actually use that in conjunction with another timeline to build different layers with our effects. But I'm going to come onto that in a little while. So underneath that, we have this loop option. And essentially, this is how fast the effect will loop or its rate that it will play back. So the moment I've got this set to a period of one, which is one second, we're just going to preview what that looks like now. So you can see that the effect is transitioning from white to blue, running down the fixtures every second. And if I now go ahead and I change that to something like five seconds, you'll notice that the effect will slow down and the rate will be a lot, lot slower. There is another option as well called count. And essentially what this does is this gets the effect to loop within a given effect length. So for instance, if I set this to a count of one, it's now going to loop one whole time over the 10 second period, which looks a little bit like this. But the good thing about this is, is I can actually stretch the effect out and it's always going to be a bound by the amount of times that it's supposed to loop within that effect length. So again, this is still looping one time within that effects given length. But I can, of course, adjust that. So now it's going to loop five times within this given length. Finally, we also have some further options down here, one of which is the shape. So if I wanted to change this from a sine wave to a square wave, I'm going to get a lot more of a jagged look to it. And I also have the ability to change the pulse width. And then finally, I also have options such as reverse. Okay, so I now want to go on to looking at pixel matrix effects. So if I go back to the filter icon here, click on that, I can bring back my pixel matrix effects, and then I can also get rid of all the group effects just by simply clicking on the X. Okay, so as you probably would have guessed, pixel matrix effects can only be applied to pixel matrices. So if I try and apply this to a group here, designer's not going to let me do that. Instead, I need to apply that to my pixel matrix. And then I can go ahead and I can preview that. So again, Pixel matrix effects obviously work by the fixtures position and the way that they're mapped. So the effects can be generally uh, recognized as more complex effects and you can get more complex shapes. So again, just having a look at these effect parameters, I have the different color parameters, the background color. Again, loop appears and I can also change parameters such as the speed and the amount of ripples that we're going to see within this effect. If I look at something like tiles, Again, you have the different properties that you can edit down here, such as the colors, the amount of tiles that are generated. And again, I can also change the seed, which will randomize the effect. 
and also I can change the loop period as well. And just one other thing as well, whilst we're looking at the different effect types, with both group and pixel matrix effects, if at any time you come up with an effect that you think you're going to use again or that you just really like the look of, you can actually save the effect by clicking save. And that's going to now save that to your user library so that you can use that same effect in different projects or even on different timelines within the same project. And all of those will be stored here and they'll be available for you every single time that you boot up Designer. So whilst we're on the subject of pixel matrices, I just really wanna have a quick look at mapping media. Mapping media content within Designer is really, really simple. Once we've imported our media into our project file via the mapping view, or even alternatively by importing it via the import button up here, we can of course then just very simply take that media content and of course just apply that to a pixel matrix just in the same way that you would with effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to my tower. And again, I'm going to simulate that. You can see how quick and easy that is. So just one or two things just to look at just before we move on. I'm just going to preview some timelines that I've made earlier today. So if I go back to the simulate window and if I select another timeline, you can see that I've used a multitude of effects to get different colors. I must admit, I'm not a lighting designer, so please don't criticize me too much. But just to give you an idea of how they look, So one of the things that I want to look at now is how you can use multiple timelines and transparency. So first off, I've got two timelines. I've got a rainbow timeline that looks a little bit like this. And then I've got another timeline with a text preset and the text presets background has got transparency. Now, essentially what happens is when you play both of these timelines together, the transparency will allow you to look through to the timeline underneath the rainbow timeline. And in fact, within Designer, you can have four layers of transparency. Now, I should note, in order to make sure that this effect looks right, you really need to be aware of the order that the timeline starts in. So you always need to make sure that the timeline that you want as the base layer starts first and then the text or the timeline that's going to go above that layer starts immediately afterwards, okay? We'll come on to how you can do that later on in your programming, but just be aware that you need to make sure that you tell designer specifically which timeline is the bottom or top layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna simulate what those timelines look together now. And as you can see, I've got my rainbow timeline on the bottom and I've got my timeline on the top. And this is because we have something called latest takes precedence, okay? Which means that the last timeline or last scene that's called or played will automatically go to the top of the stack. And any timelines that are previously playing will be a lower layer. Now, there might be times within your programming where you want to ignore the LTP rule. And we actually have a feature for allowing you to do so. And this is called priority. Okay, and this is quite important for various different concepts within your programming. Let's say that you had a scenario where you had two timelines playing every 15 minutes. So this timeline, then this timeline, this timeline, and then this timeline cycling around every 15 minutes. Let's say that you wanted to have a timeline that was specifically for an emergency situation, so something like a fire alarm. What you would obviously need to do is make sure that these timelines, which are coming on stage or being played every 15 minutes, do not override any timeline that obviously is for an emergency. And the way you would do this is you would create a timeline. So I'm going to create a timeline that's all white. Hold it end because I don't want it to be uh, released until you know the all clear is given. And then I'm going to go to my manage tools and I'm going to set the priority to high. And effectively, what this means is that any timeline with a lesser priority cannot override this timeline. Okay, and this simply means that that timeline is then going to sit underneath the high priority timeline, but it's not going to override it. It's not going to be higher in the stack. Okay, so by and large, that's it for 
this tutorial. Just go ahead, make sure you spend a lot of time just, you know, getting to use the different effect parameters and, and creating different effects uh, because it's quite a key part, obviously, of your lighting design.